Welcome back everyone to JS Simplified. Today we're going to be talking about child processes and we're going to be doing a somewhat practical example with an express server I have set up right here. So let's get started and take a look at what we have to work with. Currently I have a express server which is listening on port 8080 and we only have one route set up where we go to slash and then a number. What this is going to do is it's going to calculate whether this number is prime and return a list of factors if it's not. So let's get a quick demonstration of how this works. So localhost 8080, and we're going to go to slash, and let's put in a number like 10, which we know is not prime. And what you'll see is we get the factors 2 and 5, and is prime is false. However, if we pick a number like 3, we get prime is true, just as we would expect. Now, the way this is set up is currently, it's only able to calculate one request at a time because let's take a look at if I tried calculating something like this, like six, 60 million, I think, you can see it's taking a very long time and it's blocking this simple request of 60. So we have to wait for this request right here to finish before we can get to this one. And as you can see, it just finished. And watch, this one takes pretty much instant. While this one takes a very, very long time. And let's simulate it again. And let's try to find out if one is prime. And this should be a very straightforward thing. But the way we have our code set up, we're calculating, um, we're getting our request, and then we're calculating the result, and then we're returning. The way we want to do this is we want to offload some of this work onto a separate process. So how do we do that, really? So I'm going to kill this server so that way it stops running in here. And now I'm going to start it back up and let's actually get started with this by offloading the work of this as prime function onto a separate process. <clears throat> so we're going to go into the very top of our file and we're going to import fork from uh, child processes. So we're going to do require child process. There we go. So we want the fork function, which allows us to take our current process and completely create a whole new Node.js process. So I'm going to copy this is prime function into a new file I'm going to create right now called child.js. So I'm just going to paste this right on in here. And as you can see, it's a very inefficient way of just calculating processes. Okay, so we have this function inside this child.js process. But what we want to do is instead of storing the result here and calling this function, which now doesn't exist, we want to create a new child, which then does this for us. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do const child is equal to fork. And what we have to do is pass in a string, which is simply the module or the JavaScript file we want our process to run. So we could pass in this file if we wanted it to spin up its own server. But what we want to do is just pass in child.js. And the reason we don't have to put any slashes or anything like that is because it's in the same exact directory. And just like that, we'll now have a child process. And to demonstrate it, I'm just going to console.log child created. And then I'm also going to put in the process.pid so we can see that this process ID is different every time we send a request. And since result doesn't exist, I'm just going to comment that out. And now if we open up our terminal, again, there's not going to be any child processes. But if we send in a request to say six, what we'll see is it's going to hang because we're not responding with anything. But we can see child created 988. And here I can do the same thing. And we get 989. Perfect. So those two are working as expected. I'm going to kill this again and restart it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to send this child some data. And in Node.js, they make this very simple. What we can do is we can do child.send. And this can take in any type of data we want. For example, we can pass in a JSON object that has the parameters time is equal to date dot now, for example. And then we can get this data on our child process by listening for an event using process dot on 
and message. And what this is going to do is whenever our parent process sends us a message, we can now listen for it and respond accordingly. So I'm just going to do console.log message. Okay. And we can also do a few other things. For example, we can do process.exits and pass in an exit code of, let's say, 1. And what you'll see, and I'll do it after we get the message, and inside the server process, we can do the same kind of event listeners, and we can listen for exit in here. So I can say child exited with a code of, there we go. And now if we restart, I'm just going to res.json, uh, res.json, just an empty JSON object. And there we go. Now what you'll see is when we start up the server and go to local host. Slash, let's just pick a number 45 we just get blank JSON back but instead of here we can see that we get child created and this is the process ID the timestamp and then the child exited with a code of one and that's because this process basically just killed itself after we got a message now what we actually want to do is listen for a message and then we want to call this as prime function just like before so we're just going to do const results is equal to is prime of our number, which is going to be stored a message. And instead of passing in the date dot now, we're just going to pass in the number that we got from the parameters up here. Okay, so we're going to send this number. And what we want to do then is once we have computed the result, what we want to do is we want to do process.sends. Now this exists because this is a child process. This does not exist on a main process, and in fact this will give an error. But since we know this child.js file is a child process, you can do this. And what we can do is we can send a result, just like so. And then I'm just going to do a set timeout of, let's say, 5 seconds process.exits, like so. So after five seconds of computing the result, we're just going to exit so that we can see that this is how it works. So what we want to do is we want to listen for the message. And just like listening for exit, we can do the same thing. We can do child dot on message. And in here, we can get access to the message. And we can handle it like so. So we can do console.log message. But in here, as you'll see, this is the actual result we're looking for. So we can do res.json message. There we go. And I'm just going to get rid of that. So what will happen here is we'll create our child. And when we create this, we'll send the new message. We're going to listen for that message, calculate the results, and then send back the data. And again, this is all happening on a separate thread. And again, what I mean by that is, is this thread has its own pool of memory and it has its own pool of, it has its own Node.js runtime and all of that kind of thing. So uh, console.logh is not a function. Of course, I have to spell everything correctly. Let's go in here. There we go. Log. There we go. There we go. Okay, this should be good. Yes, it is. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to send our request to 45. And as you can see, it works as before. However, if I pick a number that should never really finish on my poor dying MacBook, like whatever this is, it still works. And then I can come in here and go local host um, 8080 slash 1. And it's going to throw an error. But there we go. You can see while this one is still loading, I can do other requests and I can keep this going 
and I can do another one that's never going to finish. And this one will still keep working. And as you'll see, we have a multiple process um, application. And what you'll see is inside of the terminal, we're creating our child process. We're sending back the data, because again, we're console.logging it. And when we create a child process, and it finishes, like the one that goes really quickly, you can see we get the exit code like so. We can also listen for errors if your process hangs. For example, we can do child.on error. There we go. So we can listen for the error, and we can do console.log e. And I'm again going to kill the processes right here. And we are going to hang a process intentionally and just do um, throw new error. This is a child process. There we go. So by restarting this up now, what you'll see is when we create a new request, we're not going to get a response, but we do get this is an error in the child process. We get the error message, and then everything works as so. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, maybe consider like, commenting, and subscribing. If you have any other questions regarding child processes or anything else JavaScript related, you can join our community Discord server or leave the question in the description below. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.